Police in Maine have found the body of the gunman who killed 18 people in Wednesday night's mass shooting. In a press conference today, officials confirmed 40-year-old Robert Carr died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Police discovered his body in a trailer near a recycling plant where he previously worked. Now that's about eight miles from Lewiston where he opened fire at a bowling alley and a bar. Officials say their investigation is ongoing. We're going to be there probably through the end of the day, making sure that we process that particular scene. Uh, and we'll also be at the bar and grill and the bowling alley probably through uh, the rest of the weekend. CBS News Chief National Affairs and Justice Correspondent Jeff Pegues joins us now from Lisbon, Maine. Jeff, we saw you there in the front row and heard you in that press conference asking about the timeline. What more have we learned today? They're still working on that timeline, Lana, but they know, obviously, that the uh, victim at some, or the suspect, excuse me, at some point ended up here behind me, just a mile or so away from where that car that was abandoned near the boat slip was found. So while there was all this concern that he may have left the area, he was here. The question is, how long was he here and investigators are still looking into that at this hour even though that intense manhunt has ended and you can see this uh, feeling of relief in this community even though the manhunt has ended the search for this motive in this attack continues because investigators obviously have a lot of questions to answer for the family members of the victims 18 people of course who were killed in this massacre. And uh, I want to dig deeper into what you're saying about this, Jeff. That suspect found in the parking lot in the recycling business behind you. Police had cleared that business two days ago. Did they have any explanation for not finding him the first time? And that's a good question. And what they told us is that they cleared it, but there were areas of this facility that they weren't aware of. And it wasn't until the owner of the facility came forward and said, hey, did you look in this area that they went there, they checked it out, and that's where they found the gunman. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not surprised to hear that, considering the amount of ground they've had to cover over the last couple of days. Uh, but finding him certainly brought that relief and took the edge off in this community that so many here were looking forward to feeling. That said, there is still a lot of healing to come in the days ahead. And so while the investigation continues, you're going to have vigils and you're going to start the funeral process and the remembrances in this community, uh, the kinds of remembrances that we've seen in so many communities, unfortunately, across this country after incidents like this. Those really beginning now that the lockdown orders have been lifted and people are no longer worried that he might still be out there trying to cause harm to people. Uh, Jeff, the commissioner also spoke at length about the questions about the gunman's mental health. What did he want the public to know? Well, they're still looking into it. That is the, the question here that a lot of people are asking. Were there signs missed? Were his, you know, should those guns have been taken away uh, at some point, especially after uh, military officials uh, seem to notice that he was acting erratically at, middle, at a military training facility? Uh, law enforcement did say today that, listen, there, there is no doubt that mental health was a major issue uh, in his behavior. However, that still doesn't specifically answer the motive question. And with any type of investigation like this, you're going to want to find those answers for family members of the victims. So while they did talk about the mental health aspect and are looking into whether he was a, he was committed to a mental health facility at some point that would have started this process of taking away his weapons or at least uh, seizing his weapons. Uh, so they're talking about that. They still have no firm answers, but that too is understandable. There's been a lot of focus on their part.
first in taking the gunman off the streets, getting him neutralized. Now that that has happened, you're going to see more of a thorough investigation into the mental, a mental health aspect of this case, whether the gun laws in this state uh, were... Uh, were uh, efficient in sort of addressing this threat. Uh, but these are still a lot of questions that, that a lot of the questions that need to be answered over the next couple of days, weeks and months. Yeah, lots of questions still. Uh, it was also interesting to hear the commissioner make that distinction between somebody who's having a psychotic break and the vast array of mental health issues uh, and even pointing to police officers that have them and, and how people shouldn't be painted with such a broad brush. Jeff Begay, thank you for digging into all those questions for us. Appreciate it. My pleasure.